guys, it's Jana and Abby from Ballerinas by Night. Today we thought we would do like a different kind of fun Q&A video. Yeah, we we'll thought, get to know us. Yeah, we'll get to know us. You know, like as adults, we all kind of unfortunately have lives outside of the ballet studio and like you guys can relate to that. So I thought we'd maybe open up about a few things that you may not know about us or you may not care to know about us, but <laughs> we'll tell you if anyway. you do, here it is. <laughs> you guys also have a couple other like ballet questions that we'll talk about as well, so. All right, so our first question. What about any favorite hobbies or things you love to do outside of ballet? I, uh, well, I'm a photographer, it's like that's my job, so, but it's also like a huge hobby of mine. I love to blog and I love to travel a lot um, with my husband or by myself or with friends. I just. I love to get out there and see things. I would say I really, like I love to garden. I don't feel like I get to do it as much as I would like, but um, I just really love to like get outside and um, work outside all day and grow food if I can. So yeah, that's one of my biggest things other than all my many jobs. <laughs> Being a wife and mom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite memories growing up? I think my favorite memories growing up were really of like, you know, also getting outside. Like we lived in this neighborhood and this was when as a child you could, you know, kind of roam your neighborhood. We had this nice little pond and, you know, I would like go to the pond and kind of like catch minnows and fish. I had, you know, like some little Mickey Mouse fishing pole. Oh, <laughs> Not high quality equipment, but you know, I mean, mostly I think I was just like playing, but um, you know, I mean, maybe that's why I love gardening so much now because yeah. I've just always kind of just felt better about life if I like could get outside and just kind of be outside for hours and get kind of lost in that. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is like, I lived in like a neighborhood probably like yours, like you just, you know, you just left the garage and the front door open and you just like went out and played with your friends. Like all of my friends like lived on the same street as me or like in the same neighborhood. And so we would just like ride bikes and like we would make up like traffic games with our bikes on the street oh, wow. or like, like one of my best friends growing up, like she and I loved dance and like we, so we put on these like dance recitals in my garage and um, we were like, really strict about it. I've heard other stories about this. I just, I love these stories. Yeah, we were like, here's the schedule, you know, you need to be at rehearsal and like, I mean, we just, it was like the greatest thing. And I saw some of those pictures the other day. Yeah. And, I mean, it was like elaborate. They had like sets and costumes. Yeah, we like, had like a sheet as like the backdrop and we cut out like neon paper letters and like put them on the back and like. My dad just filled it in and the garage door was like the curtain, you know, I mean it was high quality production yeah, yeah. for like 11 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> How can I handle the aggravation from being held back to follow my goal? Wow. Yeah. That's... But we feel you. In fact, I was kind of just talking about that. I've been kind of talking about this a lot because you know I wrote the blog about you know how I'm really just to the point of like not even setting goals because I'm not really even, you know, at least not for my dancing, you know, my other things, teaching, I have goals for myself, but it's just different. We were just having a conversation about how it's easy to go back and forth between you want to push yourself, but then you're kind of like not very motivated to push yourself. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if you're not just in like the, a good situation where you like, you have classes or you can train or you can do whatever you need to do, it's, it's very hard to to set goals and reach goals and you know if you have a goal and you feel like you can't get there and how do you handle the aggravation of that uh, yeah I mean I guess I would say one thing is keep your options open and try and generate a plan you know look around for classes that you can take even if they're not the ideal classes you would want or if you know that's hard to do make your playlist of your videos online you know classes that are posted online that you can take, workout videos you can do. Try and set yourself up a plan. See what you can do to put that plan into action. I think for me, I get really aggravated when I like don't have a plan. If I feel like, yes. you know, like I can't, I can't figure out how to even start reaching towards some goal that I have. You know, I get very like frustrated. I hate feeling helpless. Do some kind of inner work figuring out what do you really want, how can you get there. You know, I like to talk about realistic goals, like with what you have available to you, what can you realistically achieve? And that's, 
is a tough realization sometimes to come to because sometimes we want more than what we can realistically have. Yeah. Which is what I'm that's fighting. Just, that's just, that's the worst. I think it helps to talk about it. I mean, you know, even if it doesn't solve the problem, I think it's better if you can find someone to talk to about it. I mean, I have these discussions all the time about, mm -hmm. and I feel like so relieved after, I'm, after she's able to like, hear what I have to say and be like, I understand, mm -hmm. like I get it, and then you just, and sometimes that's all you need. Just, yeah. yeah, to like just acknowledge like, hey, I'm frustrated about this, and then sometimes, it, yeah, it like clears your mind to make room for like, how you can then figure out yeah. what to do about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. So, next question is, tell us about your favorite movies slash actors. I mean, my, my family is huge into Star Wars, so we've been really into that recently, and I loved it. By the way, I loved Rey. I just thought Rey was perfection on screen, and of course, bringing all the characters from the originals back, I just, I loved all of them. I also love, let's see, uh, the movie Avatar, um, like the one with the blue people. I love that movie. August Rush is another favorite movie of That's mine. Um, I, you know, I just, I love the, the symbolism of that, of how mom and the dad and the child all kind of like have this awakening and they all use their music, use their art to kind of like find themselves and find each other again. I mean, that's just like huge to me because I feel like that's kind of what I did in my life. I kind of got lost and found myself again through my art. I don't really, I feel like I don't really have favorite actors so much because very rarely do I follow kind of an actor or an actress around. Like I fall in love with them like as a role. So yeah. I mean, you know, like um, Harrison Ford as Han Solo, I adore. I mean, I adore Harrison Ford in like most of his roles, but not so much just because of like, I love him as an actor, just more because um, I just really love him as the roles he becomes. Some of my favorite movies, I really love Mamma Mia, the one with like Meryl Streep. I just really love musicals, like I think they're just so fun. But there's something about that one, like the colors, like just grease and like the blue and the white and it just that like sun-kissed skin, it just makes you feel like you're on vacation when you watch it and then I just like love ABBA, my mom loves ABBA so I grew up like listening to that all the time so cool. it's super fun like that's always on my phone like anytime I like mm -hmm. listen to anything like it's probably ABBA gold <laughs> because it's like just super fun but I also like love Mean Girls like oh, yes. we could probably speak in like Mean Girls quotes yes. <laughs> we for like an movie. entire day yeah <laughs> yeah I guess I love like a good rom-com like I'll go back and forth because you know I like those movies that are like really make me think and make me feel but then I also like movies that are just completely goofy a lot of times yeah. too because I just need something to just like completely like relax and so yeah you know, like I'm, I'm a big fan of things like uh, meet the parents and, yeah you know, yeah <laughs> or it's just like totally for fun I don't know that I have any like very favorite top actors yeah Maybe Meryl Streep. <laughs> what about our favorite music? So what about you? What's your favorite music? I love so many things. I really like cannot stand country music. I just can't, I'm the same way. can't do it. Like it just no. hurts my ears. Yeah. Um, but I love like, I love pop songs. Um, I love classical music, obviously. Um, I love just like a really good ballad or like just a really like, I don't know, like soft, soft music. like. Is it Bonnie Bear or Bon Iver? I never know how to say his name. Adele, of course. I mean. yeah, but then I also love like I love rap music. I love like mm -hmm. hip hop and like mm -hmm. oh my gosh, my husband listens to this like band from like Iceland or something called Karashi, and it's like crazy music. But it's I mean like anytime we're like we're gonna clean the house, like we put that on and we're just like yeah, like it's the most fun thing we've ever done. And I'm I mean I'm really like the exact same way. Like yeah. I mean any like. There's very few things in country that I like. Although every once in a while I can deal with like a Garth Brooks song. <laughs> yeah, Garth Brooks. He's I mean he's, he's like an all around yeah, like yeah. entertainer. Yeah. But um but no I mean kind of like I am with movies. It's like I love songs that can really move me. I love a piece of like high level classical music that's just like brilliant technically. But then mm -hmm. you know you give me a good boy band and a good pop song that I can dance to or do yeah. ads to and yes. you know Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, it's you know I'm. Really, it just kind of depends on really just you know what what mood I'm in and just what appeals to me. Like, there's not really like a genre that I'm like I'm all about. I mean, it's yeah, kind of like 
love anything that I love. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Next question is a favorite food. I will admit I am a chocoholic. I just, I don't know, it's in my blood, I guess. My mom is a chocoholic and like we just, it's really hard. I like it a lot. That's probably <laughs> my favorite food. I like like crunch, like chocolate, like sweets with like crunch to them. Like I like things with nuts mm -hmm. and like, I don't like it to be, I don't know, like just soft. That's kind of like weird, but that's just a thing. I don't know. Oh man, I love pretty much, um, you know, I mean, all Italian, like pasta, yeah. pizza, yeah. bread, butter, yeah. cheese. I would say that with food, you know, I try to eat lots of the good stuff. You know, I try to eat lots of like raw fruits and veggies and things, but everything bad for you, I love. You know, yes. like, I mean, a good, a good cupcake, a good, you know, piece of chocolate. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I really like, I do have to work on finding like a very good balance with things mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I'm not gonna so. deny myself things that I like, but um, I definitely, I try to stay healthy too. Yeah. So I work at it, you know. Everything in moderation. That's right. right. Next question is kind of a, like a deep one. Like, yeah. I feel like this is like a, hard to do in a short answer, but we'll try. What advice would you give to your 22 year old self? I think we both, were, we were talking about this before we filmed and I think we both agreed that like 22 was like a good year for us. Yeah, like, we were kind of pulling we it together by 22. Yeah, we both were, so I think, I think you were saying oh, 18. And by the way, Janet and I were the same age, we were born in the same year and we got married in the same year. So for us to say we were both kind of getting it together at 22 also means we were kind of getting it together the same year. Yeah. So we kind of like, we have this similar path in that yeah. sense. So that's an interesting fun fact about both of us. We'll literally sometimes look at each other and be like, what, how old are we? Yeah. Like, what <laughs> what how anniversary are we? How long have we been yeah. married? <laughs> we help each other out with that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you got married on spring solstice mm -hmm. and I got married on fall solstice. Yeah, yeah, the same year. <laughs> Abby was saying earlier to me that it was probably like her 18 year old self that she would want to give advice to. And I could talking to. Yeah. Sure. I think, and I think, yeah, I'm the same way. Or like maybe even like me like two years ago or something. Because like, you know, there's just been lots of like changes with my career and stuff and just sometimes. I just need a good like, what do you want? Just like, <laughs> say what you want and like, go do what you do, need to do to get that. I think I'm, just, I'm always like very reserved about things, like about me personally and like sharing my desires and things like that. And like, so I think I've had a really hard time telling people what it is that I want in order to get the help to get there. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe someone telling me that it's okay to be vulnerable and put yourself out there would be, that would be good advice, I think. I think for me, if I had to give my 18 year old self a talking to, um, I would definitely say, keep dancing. <laughs> you know, that was the age that I quit. And you know, I mean, I, I had my, my reasons and I, you know, emotionally, you know, a lot of things were just really like very difficult for me at that age. I had huge amounts of um, social anxiety and I think the ballet world was hard on me but the regular world really wasn't any easier on me so I think I thought I would solve things by leaving ballet that I think if I had stayed in ballet I would have um, figured out but um, I just kind of needed to like figure myself out but I wish somebody had told me well Somebody did tell me and I just didn't listen. <laughs> Somebody really, really, really super important to me said, don't quit dancing and I didn't listen. So, you know, if I could somehow go back and make myself listen yeah. and just try and figure out how I could have um, kind of like figured out some of those things I was having trouble with and still been dancing because um, I really, you know, I went through three really rough years um, not having dance in my life. Big, and I was just really, I was just kind of lost without it. I didn't really, I didn't have anything I was working towards all of a sudden. Um, I, I let myself become completely unhealthy. And the ways, you know, I mean, just not eating right and just not, not doing any exercise. And I mean, just, you know, stuff that I would joke at the time. I mean, literally, I would joke that like, well, you know, like this might affect me when I'm 70, but who cares? You know, you, you just think you're... Invincible. invincible and it's like no like those consequences aren't gonna happen when you're 70 they're gonna happen more when you're like 25 
And I mean, I think a lot of things I probably wouldn't have so much trouble with now, you know, I mean, just physically, if, um, if I had continued like taking better care of myself or had figured out how to take care of myself better at the time. Yeah, by 22, I was kind of starting to figure it out. I, uh, I figured yeah. out that, you know, eating, eating like I was eating wasn't gonna work and um, not dancing wasn't gonna work and I kind of started to pull all that stuff together. So, yeah. you know, and now I've spent whatever, about 10 years trying to overcome all that. It really yeah. did, it put me like, not just back at square one, but like back at like negative a thousand. <laughs> so, you know, yes, if you're, if you're 18 or young or whatever, like, yeah. You know, and that it really goes along with what you were saying about like just figure out what you want, mm -hmm. and um, and that's what I didn't do. I didn't figure out what I really wanted, and I didn't do that soul searching. So, yeah, you know, always ask yourself that question: like, what do I really what want? What do you really want? Yeah. So the next question: Do you have a fashion icon? I don't know if that really have like a fashion icon. I mean, I I like fashion. I love to watch like the live runway shows during yeah. Fashion Week and like. I appreciate all of that. Like, I think that it's a really interesting industry. But I don't really like follow any like fashion icons, I guess. But I do. I really like style blogs. Like, there's a couple that I like really follow, and I just think they do. Like, I just love their style. It's not overdone, but it's just very put together and looks nice. And they can the photography is really great. So it's like you know that's extra fun for me to look at that. Like, I really I respect the fashion industry. I really I like appreciate the work that the fashion industry does and I like to see some of that as well but I just really like it's not something that I really follow at all and for myself I'm just like there was a time when I used to like dress kind of like cuter than I do now it just doesn't really happen anymore I've become very much kind of like a tomboy jeans and t-shirt kind of a girl it's totally something that like I aspire to in a lot of ways and and like but um but no, I don't really have any fashion icons, unfortunately. <laughs> What's your favorite quick go-to meal for a busy day? I would say mine is um, this new kind of little oatmeal that I have that it comes in individual packets. So you can just like dump the packet into a bowl and then you boil water and pour the boiling water over it and let it sit for like two minutes. So it's nice and easy because normally oatmeal is really like a pain to make in a pan because the pan gets like so messy cooking it and um so i've been really enjoying that and then i also have these like apples i've been getting that are in the apples they're like not too sweet not too tart but they're really like nice and crisp and so i've been really into them lately those have been things that i've just been kind of like grabbing on the go quite a bit my go-to quick thing is probably just a sandwich i love just like toasted bread and turkey or ham um, some greens and tomato and oh, that sounds um, good. I like to put like potato chips or, or tortilla <laughs> chips even like a couple of them on the top because I like crunchy things like I said earlier about my like chocolate my my husband's like the cook of our house he's he's very good so I'm very fortunate that a lot of times I don't have to make any <laughs> meals and he does it for me so I'd love to see stretching advice and ways to motivate yourself to stretch we were just talking about this like <laughs> You know, I I don't know where my splits went, but they aren't here anymore. <laughs> and I, it's bye just bye. literally because I'm not ever taking the time to stretch. Like I'm not getting um, an instructed stretch um, in between bar and center, and so it's really hard to make yourself hold it there. Sometimes you don't even get a long enough time to do like both sides and hold it long enough to feel like yeah. you really stretched it out. Or you can't stay after class because they're kicking you out because mm -hmm. you're in the adult class. No, it's the last thing of the day. And that's what's really difficult, I think. And I mean, even if you are one of the earlier classes, like a lot of times it's like, hey, studios. Yeah, the next class is moving in, so you've got to, you're booted out. It's one of those things that like you wish you could do it at home, but then like you have to be pretty warm. So you can't, and I feel like if you've been to class and you wait until you get home, you know, like it's almost like worse because your muscles kind of like, just on the drive home even if it's not that far they're like eh, and then you get home and it's yeah. also like not the best time to stretch definitely like motivating yourself to stretch is difficult i do i like a lot of the bands that are out now the stretching bands i have used those quite a bit um like last year when i was dancing that 
it was a pretty big motivator for me because it was just kind of fun to like see what I could do and I was lucky enough to be in rehearsals where I would get some kind of a warm up but then I would have some downtime during rehearsals and so I would just kind of go to my own little corner and take my band and do my stretches and that was really nice. um, helpful. So, you know, if you have a situation like that, I always encourage people to, you know, if you have downtime in class, like while the teacher's coming up with a combination, you definitely need to try and like use that to your advantage and, you know, as opposed to just kind of like standing around waiting on the teacher, you know, take that time, um, you know, as your time to utilize the facility and the time in yeah. the studio. That's um, a great, that's a great idea. You yeah. know, I mean like as a teacher, like I, I try not to have too much of that. I try to keep class moving pretty quickly, but you know, you're still generally going to have something. So if you're working on turns, work on your turns, do some releves, do some stretches, whatever you feel like you need. Mm -hmm. um, probably don't pull a band out though in the middle of class. Yeah. Um, you know, like downtime at a rehearsal you could do, but in the middle of class, you probably would not have enough time to um, respectfully be able to like bring it out and put it away. But you can always do foot in the hand or put a leg on the bar or do your splits. Just don't don't get into something where you're like sitting and then it's like, well, oh, are you stretching or are you sitting? Be aware of that. So generally like a standing stretch would be better just so that you're still like alert and aware. Now I was talking to Jana um, one question we got was asking for more petit allegro advice. This is one I have a really hard time with because sometimes it's kind of when you're like when you're trying to teach a child to skip and the best thing you can do is like take their hand and skip with them so that they can feel your rhythm and your coordination and occasionally you know like I'll kind of like go with my students and do a couple of jumps with the upbeat and with the release so that they can kind of do it with me and they can get that feeling like that's what my teachers did with me when they when we really needed some help they would like pull it out and you know kind of either do it with us or demonstrate for us so that we could see what they were talking about because the last video that I did for Petit Allegro that that's pretty much my best effort of trying to convey the release and the the bounce, the bounce um, yeah. so it's a really without you know, like at least seeing you in like your specific situation. Yeah, but, yeah, it's hard to yeah, and like um, you know, if we were in the same room, then I think I could help. But across the video, it's kind of hard to relay. Yeah, um, I mean, I think you can always just work on like strength mm -hmm. in general to help get the bounce and like get your foot all the way off the ground. Um, oh, well, and here's one thing I can tell you. If you had your feet on a wall, and imagine, I don't know, that you're on like a skateboard or something where you can move, and you were gonna like push off. So, here are your feet on the wall, and you're gonna push the wall away. That's what you have to do with the floor. You have to think that I'm pushing off and pushing the floor away. So, I mean, that's something that you can even kind of practice. Like I say, if you can get something that you could kind of slide on, but you wouldn't even have to literally use a wall. I mean, all you'd have to do is just kind of like use your imagination and, yeah. you know, kind of like, okay, I'm gonna push and just get that action because it is, it's a lot of the feet and ankles. It's very similar to the idea of um, another video we did with the rolling and springing to point. You're springing to your point shoes. It's the same thing in your jumps. You've really got to use your ankles to spring. Um, so, trying to gain the strength for that. Mm -hmm. Same way with point, a lot of it is um, a strength issue. So if you're having trouble with Petit Allegro, if you can find a safe place to jump and try and do like 32 changements every day, uh, very continuous and each time really trying to get that push off working through the ankles and the toes, yeah. um, I think you would find some, it would make, it would make a difference. I think you would yeah. find some strength pretty quick. That's all the questions you guys sent in. Thanks for playing along with the fun little video. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed kind of like hearing some different things about us and some non-ballet things, the different yeah. side of things. Yeah. If you guys liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Comments? Yes. Comments below what, you, what else you would like to see from us. This is 
my last day I know. here with Abby. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to do something fun, because we just wanted to like enjoy like having each other's company. Yeah. Because, you know, I have to say that I was like, I was quite jealous when um, Jana was doing the video with Catherine Morgan. I mean, number one, because it's Catherine Morgan, but number two, just because I was like, I know they're cute together, but she's my friend to be cute with. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, you know, and I didn't know that Jana was going to get to come see me, so I didn't, had no idea, like, when would this ever happen again? Yeah. So it's been just, like, so great having her here. It's been uh, just the best time. We're going to have to, like, yes. figure out a way to, like, make it happen more often. Yeah, definitely. And also come like us on Facebook and our Instagram account is Ballerines by Night. It's fairly yeah. new, so and but we're trying to like keep it pretty active and yeah. keep it up. So we're trying to post like different things on Facebook that we do on Instagram. Yeah, so that it's not just like repetitive. Yeah. Is that yours? No. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Go watch our other videos. Yep. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.